black hoodie on, and it's reflecting UV more than other types of black, then uh, that will seem to glow purple in some people's eyes, but not for others. Um, we also have IR vision that cameras can pick up, but humans don't. Uh, there's a popular DIY project where you can dig out the IR filter that's installed on most cameras to keep your pictures. Oh, sorry. Hello. Excellent. So, uh, Okay, um, you may know about the popular DIY project where you take open your digital camera, preferably a cheap one, and dig out the IR filter that keeps all your photos com from coming out weird. Um, that keeps it from seeing the IR frequencies that you can't normally pick up. Uh, if you take that out and replace it with a piece of exposed photo negative to block out most of the visible light, then you can actually see all of the sun's reflected IR light, and you can use IR LEDs to see things like if someone has, is wearing black clothing, sometimes you can actually see white clothing underneath it, which is a bit weird for um, people with privacy concerns, for example. Um, and it also doesn't pick up some black dyes, so you can have another black hoodie or jacket, and it'll show up as white or gray under infrared. Um, obviously, you can also use this to construct your own DIY night vision by taking some kind of tiny, cheap digital camera that's meant to be used once and take out the, uh, the video hookup, stick it in something like a goggle setup, and have an infrared LED flashlight um, shining in front of you. You may know about this from uh, the Silence of the Lambs, but uh, it's an invisible flashlight, basically, that the other person can't see, but you can. Um, here we also have O2 amp goggles, which are a new uh, thing that I think you can only order if you're a doctor. But for $300, you get three pairs of goggles. And one of them senses uh, the blood saturation in your skin, so that you know if you close your hand and open it again, there will be spots where the blood is gone. Uh, it magnifies that. Uh, and then another one that shows you the blood oxygenation, so it, it's marketed as being good for nurses and for doctors so they can find your veins more easily. But you can also use it to detect uh, if someone is more flushed or less. Uh, finally, there's a combination pack. Now, there's also a kind of video filtering that works like on this concept. Um, it detects blood oxygenation by filtering out the specific frequency that is reflected by oxygenated blood as opposed to non-oxygenated and by uh, showing those differences in accelerated time, you can actually see someone's pulse. So imagine if you have, for example, a set of Google Glass, and you have some video filtering set up, and you have a little LED in the corner that flashes when it's focused on someone to show you their pulse. Imagine the possibilities if, for example, you want to be a cheater on a first date or something like that and figure out what the other person is feeling or if they're nervous or calm or what's going on. I definitely hope none of you are doing that right now. So that's the input side. You have sensors that you're using to augment your own natural capabilities. You can also uh, join the burgeoning quantified self movement, which is um, exemplified by like the Fitbit and all kinds of pedometers are a very basic example. Uh, and there's all kinds of mobile technology based on this too, where you're taking your own body data and broadcasting it to the world. So, for example, the mood sweater, uh, I believe, senses galvanic skin response, which is changes in your skin conductance based on your emotions. Like, the more emotionally intense you are, the greater, the, uh, or the more conductive your skin is. And apparently, as I learned from someone just today, this varies from uh, the difference when you exert yourself, because instead of spikes from exertion, you see, like, a smooth incline. So the mood sweater translates that into colored LEDs that show that you're calm or that you're alert, or that you're excited, or tense. You also have Nekomimi. Um, do you know, does anyone here know about Nekomimi? Excellent, have you tried them? You should, because they're excellent. Um, so the, the base device here is the NeuroSky, which is a brainwave reader. You might have seen um, in game applications, the Jedi Mind Trainer. Uh, yeah, it came out a while ago, it reads your brainwaves, and based on whether you're 
uh, relaxed, uh, i.e. you have a high alpha wave concentration, or you're tense and alert, um, and you have high beta waves, uh, it'll levitate or let fall a little plastic ball. Uh, the Neko Mimni works on a very similar concept, where if you're broadcasting more alpha waves, which are lower frequency, um, and denote relaxation, then the ears will sort of, like a cat's ears, sort of fold down. But if you perk up and concentrate on something and become alert, they stick up. It's pretty excellent. Uh, and then there are more ubiquitous and obvious ones like Google Latitude, which is another way of quantifying your presence around uh, and broadcasting it to other humans or computers. Another application uh, which sort of combines those two is for therapy. Um, you have, for example, the HeartSpark, which is a DIY project um, that you can also buy where, I sound like a commercial, apologies, but it's exciting, right? Uh, the HeartSpark picks up, it combines with a chest strap that uh, measures your heartbeat and broadcasts that to an LED-based heart shape that pulses and shows everyone else your heartbeat. Um, you also have the accelerometer-based uh, sleep cycle alarm. Uh, so we're all walking around with mini computers, right? You have a telephone in your pocket that's full of sensors of all kinds, especially the accelerometer in this case. You place it on your bed, and uh, it measures when you're more relaxed and not moving, or when you're moving around a lot. And based on that, you give it a time frame when you want it to wake you up, and uh, it picks the time within that time frame when you're most active so that you wake up in a relaxed state or where you're already, you're not jerked awake, you're, you're brought up naturally. Um, additionally, there is a new product called the NeuroDreamer Sleep Mask, which I'm alpha testing and you can come look at it afterwards, uh, where it's a recently kickstarted project that is made to enhance your ability to fall asleep and afterwards to lucid dream. So they measured um, the type of waves that you put out in all kinds of frequencies. So there's alpha, beta, delta, and theta are the normal um, types of, of brainwave frequencies that you'll see in people. And when you're falling asleep, you don't normally just see only alpha or only beta. You see a mixture of these. And based on data from all those mixtures, they created a series of um, changing frequencies to induce in you that you see when people are falling asleep. The way that you induce brainwave patterns is also pretty interesting. Um, you can do that via binaural beats. Do, uh, does anyone here know about binaural beats? Have you played around with them? OK, yeah. The idea is that um, alpha waves pulse on a certain set of frequencies, right? Um, if you set an LED to pulse at those frequencies, your brain waves will actually entrain to that. And it sounds kind of like new age hokey, but it actually is tested and works. Um, it also gives me headaches. Uh, you can train yourself to be more relaxed or meditative or alert. There's also an audio method of doing this, where if you play, since you can't hear waves this low, it's usually from like 4 to 10 hertz or so. So 4 to 10 beats per second is not something that you can hear as an audio tone. But if you play, for example, 400 hertz and 408 hertz, 400 in one ear and 408 in the other ear, you'll hear a beat at the frequency difference there. So you'd hear eight times per second a beat. It sounds sort of like woo 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 And um, then your brain will still entrain to that. So this combines both of those. And I invite you to come play with it. So as we heard, you've got inputs and outputs. You have sensors and broadcasters. So the NeuroDreamer and, neuro and NecoMimi are basically analogous, they're just opposites, like a speaker and a microphone. Or in this case, yeah, okay. So the NeuroDreamer is influencing you to entrain to a certain brainwave pattern, while the NecoMimi are taking those brainwaves and broadcasting them to the world. The North Paw tells you which way is north and allows you to orient yourself intuitively, and Google Latitude lets you show other people how you're oriented. The O2 amp glasses and video processing allow you to view other people's pulses and perhaps attune your behavior accordingly. And the heart spark lets you show people when you love them or just when you're excited about them.
There have been a number of really interesting uh, interfaces developed recently. So, one of them is basically a temporary tattoo with circuitry embedded in it. It's flexible and peelable, and it lasts for about a day. Um, it uses van der Waals interactions instead of adhesives to just uh, van der Waals being the sub what curses is it submolecular or subatomic? Either way, it's okay. Excellent, thank you. Uh, it uses that kind of bonding instead of adhesives to create a bond, and so it's very durable for the time that it's on you. And then it peels off like a layer of glue. Uh, they've tested this with anything from LEDs to transistors to even simple circuits. Uh, so they've proven that it works, uh, including taking EEG readings off of live people. Uh, there's also Bluetooth Low Energy makes possible a lot of applications based in jewelry. It's a small chip about this big, and you can embed it in rings or pendants or whatever. It's like regular Bluetooth, but it requires obviously a lot less energy because it's only sending out a ping every once in a while, like every few seconds or every few hours or every time that your temperature drops below a certain level or anything like that and communicates with your mobile phone in much the same way that regular Bluetooth does. Um, and then finally, uh, you have the Proteus pill, which is this digital pill with a teeny chip embedded in it, the size of a grain of sand that communicates with a patch on your side. So this thing has been developed, so for example, you can tell if you're taking your medication regularly. If you have memory trouble, then you can make sure that you're going to stay healthy or sane or whatever. And um, so you ingest the pill, and the power source is actually your stomach acid combining two or connecting two electrodes to power the chip itself. And that's how it powers the radio frequency local field that communicates with a patch on the outside of your stomach, which is logging when you take your pills and can send you an alert if you haven't taken it in, it in like five hours or so. But the field is very small, so it's not like anyone can like just walk by and tell what your um, when you last took your sanity pills. So we also have um, a new patent by Nokia, which is uh, it addresses the skin adhesive patches like I talked about before, but it also includes things like embedded tattoos that would pulse if your battery is low on your phone or if you get a call from a specific person. Uh, they've patented this, but as far as I know, they haven't actually developed it yet. Um, you also have Google Glass, which I think has a lot of applications for uh, interpreting the world around you. Um, a lot of people are focusing on, on quantified self stuff, like the Fitbit, for example. Have you heard of that? Hands up anyone who has. Excellent. We have a few brave souls. Uh, it's a little clip-on thing that is... Um, similar to a pedometer, but measures a few other parameters as well. You have a lot of quantified self going on. It's a really hot space. But I think it's more interesting to sort of, to learn to augment your own senses and become sort of a superhuman. Because who doesn't want to become a superhuman? Um, beyond that, you also have loads of mobile-based devices. Since you're carrying around this basically a pack of sensors all the time, you can use it for any kind of stuff. Um, I was in a, a startup competition where we came up with an idea over two days and then pitched it at the end. Um, ours was an assistive device for the blind where you mount it on your, on your wrist. This was a, obviously our two-day prototype. And it, has, it uses your phone camera and a sonar sensor to allow a remote human to assist you, um, bringing like, not only technology but even other human beings into your sort of sensor bank that you can use to communicate with the world. So if you're blind, you can tell which dress is the red one. Or uh, if there's a, a concrete barrier five feet in front of you that wasn't there yesterday. Oh, I forgot one as well. Uh, going back on the tattoos front, someone has created a QR tattoo that links to a YouTube video. So when you scan his arm, it becomes, uh, it includes the, the cell phone, the other person's cell phone in his own decoration. So what I want to do with this is make everyone go into open sourcing it. Anyone who has an interest in this should start developing now because it's hugely uh, explosive right now. One reason to do it is because uh, you want sensors that you don't already have available to. I want to be able to have thermal IR vision and see where the people are in the buildings around me. 
uh, for games of hide and seek. Some people, <laughs> you know that um, eventually this technology is going to be developed and I want there to be a lot of good guys developing it. I want there to be people who are going to open source it, who are going to share what the, uh, what the code is so that you can tell that if you have an optical implant, then it's not going to be hooked up to some kind of remote viewing device that someone else can hack into. Um, also, if you have a lot of people collaborating on making something safe and non-hackable, then it's a lot like more likely to actually become that way. Um, or to make it extra hackable, I don't know. So that you can take a base device that already exists and add new capabilities to it. And also, uh, I saw a talk recently by Cory Doctorow in which he talked a lot about prosthetics and the future of how uh, you know, you're going to have big companies producing prosthetics and often these things are super expensive and normal every person can't afford them without either a loan or just getting it on um, some kind of a financing plan from the company itself. So if you don't make your payments, what if your like, prosthetic leg company decides that they are going to trigger your legs to walk you back to their office? It's probably not a great scenario. So we should have alternatives available. We want a broad field of experimentation here so we can make ourselves more awesome. And the other reason, of course, is that everybody wants to be Raven from Snow Crash. You want to be the guy with a sidecar with a nuclear warhead in it that will detonate if your heart stops beating. It's the best, it's the most convincing thing that I can come up with. So this is what I have. I'm going to put this online so that you can see all of the uh, links that I've made. Uh, the Nekomimi, UV, cataract surgery, everything. And I want to know what you want to see. We had one brave soul earlier sharing uh, your desire for easy directional viewing. So what else do you want to see? Come up and talk. And also come see the, uh, the NeuroDreamer thing. It's excellent. It has flashy lights. Stop clapping and come talk to me.